Hello, and welcome to part one of our How to Use GIMP series. GIMP is a general Im image manipulation program. Um, it's a free download. You go look up GIMP online, and you can download it for free. Um, that's why I use it. It's easy to use. Um, there's certain things I'm still trying to remember how to do on the program. Um, now that I have to download it, and start up on this brand new computer that I'm working on here. Um, I finally got my uh, stuff in gear so I can do these videos and show things. I'm down here in the corner. This is my um, file system for my comic. There's all the issues. I'm going to be scanning the cover of issue number one. Um, this is basically what you're going to see when you open up GIMP for the first time. Um, you might have to resize it for your screen, whatever you want to do to get the thing. That's going to be in the middle there is your working area. You can um, resize the sides so that they... Uh, show you more of what you want or less of what you want. Um, there's certain things that I don't particularly need to use that I just take off. You go up here to Windows and... Is it Windows? Dockable Dialogs. There it is. Um, and all these different things here are parts of the sidebar things that you can um, um, go ahead and add to what's going on on the sides. So if you take that one was the colors, so you, those are color presets. Um, I like to keep it on default unless I'm actually coloring my own comic. I have a preset that I've created from the previous um, running version that I had on my old computer that I I know how to get it in here. I haven't done it yet, but I will have to, um, when I go do the, the uh, video about coloring, I'll show how you can, if you have a color palette that you created yourself, you can take it from computer to computer with just a, a file and um, I will show how to do that later, but um, color palettes are easy to work with once you are into that. But we're going to show just a black and white thing going on here. I don't particularly care for how those icons look. And if I go into Edit, Preferences, and icon theme. Um, if I click it onto the legacy one, it brings up these more colorful icons and that really helps my old eyes as far as seeing, okay, that's the color picker one. Um, there is a paint bucket and all that. I'll show those uses here in just a few. I'm going to hit OK. I like where I'm at with that. Now, we need that cover image. So what we want to do is go to Create, and we're going to go to the camera scanner. I've set the um, cover page of this comic on the scanner already. So we're going to do a color picture. You can do it grayscale or black and white um, if that's where you're stopping. Um, I like to do color because it picks up more detail even in the black and white images. And I'll show you in just a second why that's important to me. So I'm going to hit that uh, adjust quality. I know my resolution is going to need to be higher. I want to have at least 300 DPI. Um, 
for that. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Now I'm going to hit Preview. Um, you can do all your scanning out of GIMP if you don't want to do it in GIMP. If you have a different scanning program that came with the printer or whatever um, that you have, you can do your scans any way you want. Um, I usually do them separately um, and then when I go in to a file I just save all of the um, images with the name of what page they are and then I can work on them later in the GIMP program just by dragging and dropping them onto the screen. Um, but what I wanted to show for the scan part is a lot of times these scan programs if you have a preview use it to get that preview so that you can scale down how much area because that box represents the whole area of the scanner and if you only want that much of it to be scanned then you zoom in on it with those little boxes and the lines and then you hit scan <clears throat> and it will bring it into this program. Um, GIMP uses its own um, file name for when you're working on files so you have to save as your JPEG or TIFF. I prefer TIFF for printing um, but of course JPEG is better for um, if you're doing a web comic or whatever else as far as that goes. There is my cover. I'm happy with that. Um, what I'm going to do right now is zoom in on it. I'm going to hit it at full resolution and as you can see um, there's pencil marks and fuzziness to this that just doesn't make it look right. Even though I've erased all these things on the paper, uh, little shadows and things like that always creep back in and we want to clean up this picture. So the way we do that is with this color picture picker tool and all right let's see how why isn't anything working here for some reason oh look there it goes it should have a little thing all right whatever um I want to select basically a gray area like that and if you notice that if you click the darker areas you can see which ones are going to affect the artwork the most and you don't want to use those ones so pick a gray area that does not otherwise um, ruin the artwork but uh, but does take out some of the gray so um, let's take a look at it at this level here the other tool we use here is the paint bucket tool um, this shows what colors the paint bucket is going to be using you can change the colors by clicking either one of those and say you want red you want red to be the foreground and then you can change it into that but um, we want black and white now white is going to be the foreground color if I hit the uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. paint bucket tool I'm looking at it we want the foreground color filled we want to fill the whole selection and not similar because if you do it with the similar colors and when you click inside one of these you're just getting that part of the selected area and if you do it with the fill whole selection then all the color that was that color is going to go away so 
Ooh, let this think for just a second, I think. There we go. And now if I click out here to a sh one of these shadows, it's going to pick up another set of the grays. And we're going to need it to think for a second, I guess. Da -da -da -da. Come on, think. Think program, think. Um, not sure what's going on. Let's see here. Why is it letting me select my paint bucket tool? Um, really need it to work. Really need it to work. Come on now. I need you to work. Why aren't you letting me select any other tools? Maybe it's because this is not a saved picture yet. Maybe it's having trouble from that. Um, let's save as. Let's put it in my folder that I have open, which is 24. And save it. Oh, 24 is not actually open. There it is. So now it's an untitled picture in that folder. And hopefully it'll let me work on it better now. So here we go. Color fill. Click. Oh, black and white. I do not want that. All right. So what we need to do is undo that. Um, where's my undo tool? Layers, channels, paths, mode normal. Let's look for undo. Uh, Backable dialogues. Where is undo? Undo history. Let's click it. There it is. It's not where I want it. So let's move it. You click that little icon and you can put it basically in any other dockable place. So I'm going to edit that. Oops, it didn't go in. Go in. There it goes. Now it's got a spot. Um, I think. Undo. No, no, it's still a. It's not being particularly nice to me here. I should be able to put it in where I want. Well. I'm not sure why it's not going in with these other tabs. It should. Anyway. And did the color. That dialog box should go wherever I tell it to, but it's not. I'll work on it in a second. Color select. Let's hit that color. Fill, I want white, fill that color. Color 
select. Now is it working? Okay. Well, I moved that. And now I can select. I guess that'll work for me. Um, if we click way out here, that's going to pick up a lot of it. It's a good thing. Select right there. And bucket pill. Boom. That's a lot of light. We're getting there. And basically, we're just getting rid of a lot of this lighter gray colors. Because we don't want them. That's a color picker. I've not gone over to. There it is works that um let's take a look around here we still have some funky stuff going on uh, there was a pencil line here let's see if we can get rid of the rest of that pencil line Every time I touch one of those, then this works. Um, so I'm going to live with that. And boom. I think I'm almost to a point where I can show next step. Okay, let's take a look here. We've got, let's zoom back out. Let's go down to 200. Um, we want to deselect what's in there. So to make sure you've deselected things, I found the trick is... You hit the circle, which is a circle select tool, and then you click next to it, it deselects, and you don't have anything selected then, which is um, important for certain things. Um, you can see there's still some things that are going to need to be cleaned up, but that's all right. What we're going to do next is go back to this color picker tool. I'm not sure why it's making me touch something else to get that to work. I'm hoping it's just a matter of this is a new computer and it hasn't quite um, synced up with my brain yet or I'm forgetting something. Um, we'll keep an eye on that. We're going to color pick and we're going to pick in the dark area. Oh, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to pick in the white area. Only this time, when we go to fill, we are going to switch to black and white and then we're going to hit oh golly what is it control I which inverts the selection so now instead of being on the white you are selecting all the stuff that should be black we're going to go back to our bucket fill blacks on top and we're going to fill the black with black and that when we zoom in now we'll show that all the blacks let's unselect everything all the blacks are nice and black which is what we want um, you can see there's still some straggly pixels but what we're going to do to solve these problems is we're going to go through this image at, let's pick it at 400. And we're going to use the pencil tool. 
pencil size. We're at 51, so we don't want something going that big. Um, so we'll unselect that. We're going to bring it down to <laughs> I don't know why it's not letting me dock these properly. I just undocked it pretty easily, but now it's undocked. I wonder what's going on with that. Dockable dialogs. Tool options. Tool options. Why won't you redock? I just undocked you. That's kind of silly. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to have to figure it out for too long here. Why? I want my tool options over here, but I don't want them to be doing what they're doing. I want them to be a tab right here, which theoretically should tab itself automatically right there, and it has in the past for me. I just don't know why it is as in a brand new program. Uh, not very happy with it. That's all right. Um, I'll figure out what's going on with that some other time and report on it as an update or something. Uh, for right now, the tab is out of its dock, but that's okay. It's still there. Um, so if it happened to go away, like if undo went away, oops, I clicked it off, I can't find it anymore. You go back up to the dockable, dia the dockable dialogues and then you just re-click it. And now, that's funny, it's over there where I wanted it. That's crazy, but that's okay. Um, tool options is still floating over here for now. I wonder if I unclick tool options. And then redock the tool options. Oop, am I over there now? That is the tool options. But I don't want them there. I want them over here. Uh, okay, anyway. Is there a way to dock these where I want them? I don't know. Anyway, that's life. We've got lots of options, size being the most important one right now. I want to put myself up to five pixels. No, not five, seven, eight. Um, oh, the brush head. Don't want that brush head. I want a solid brush head. Ooh, that's a big one though. Oh, it went back up to 51. Don't know why. Anyway, if we go to five, that should be a square. Okay, it is. So, what we're going to do I'm not sure why it's not following me very well. All these edges, see now if I hit the shift while I'm holding that spot I can make a straight line. And that's what we're looking for. It's a nice straight line. So if I want to cut off all the pixels that aren't there correctly, why isn't it following my mouse? Uh, it should be. It really should be. Uh, Oh, now it is. Okay, so let's undo that last couple of. There we go. And I scroll all the way down to the bottom. And if I do this correctly, it will. Erase that entire line 
and make it really nice. So it doesn't have to be completely straight on the screen because it'll print okay. So I choose there, hit shift, come over here, fill it all the way in. See now I've got some weird pixels in here, but they're okay. What we're gonna do is come back in a second and fill the problem spots back in with black. So once we go around that outside like that, we can switch the colors and start inside, go all the way down and match it and then you'll see all the other color spots that were funky will disappear. So I've got that corner marked. Let's go to this corner and I will fill it all the way in to there. I'll go back up to the top. Do it again, and if we go back and look, anything that was in that line that was not correct is now filled in. That corner still selected. Come across here, do that, and that line selected. So now the inside. Let's go up a notch. Let's hit it up to 800. So we can take a closer look. Um, I like to have a good eight point. Hey, look, my daughter's home. Cool. I'm on a video. Say hi to the world. No, that's so weird. Huh? Stop it. Pause it. No, I'm not going to pause it. Here's the mail. Well, thank you. Anything for me? No. I don't know. She just turned 18 yesterday. So anyway, I want to make a nice corner in here, but then we're going to go down to the bottom. And I just kind of eyeball it so that it's got a good, nice size, nice size. That'll print well. And come around a little bit of the line go. Did it deselect? There it is. And we'll do that. And as you can see, once we get all these. Was done. We've got the border finished. Hello. Hello. And these dots we can just go through and kill. So quit laughing at me. My kid, that was her boyfriend, just came in. Anyway, um, as you can see, some of these lines are now not connected to the edges where they previously were. You can just go through and, okay, if you don't want them as big as that, change your uh, size down to two or three, and then it blend it right back in. Um, so what I have to do now is go through this methodically all the way through and just look for out of place pixels. So, or anything that I want to heighten the shape of, switch back and forth between the color, and you fix 
anything and everything that doesn't look good. So that part takes a long time and I'm not going to show it all. And that's fine. But what that does is get you down to your black and white image. Once you've gone through your whole image and um, cleaned up all the pixels, yes, it does take time. But as you can tell, most of those pencil marks are already gone. Any that are left, zoom in and on Smiley's face here. Um, black, you can just poof, they're gone. So that's how you clean up your black and white art on the computer. Um, now if you have any questions about black and white fixing of art, I want you to feel free to ask me in the comments. I will gladly go through and help fix anything or teach you tips and tricks that I know um, that I haven't thought of to add into this particular video um, at this point. So you mean anything that's still messed up on your edges as you go around looking, just fill them in. Um, so it, it's a methodical thing, you just go up and down looking for those things. I usually start in the top left corner, I go down to the bottom, then I'll move it over to wherever the next section is and then I'll go back up to the top and I just go across the entire image that way looking for anything to fix and once that's all done the image is ready to print. You can put it in your template um, and it's good to go. Print. Um, you fixed all the little knick-knack problems with the artwork and that's what this program is good for. Um, so in the next episode what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take a black and white image, strip out all the white so it's clear, turn it into layers and then color each layer so that you get a really good image colored before you save it as a TIFF without layers. Um, to save this black and white image you don't really want to leave it in this uh, OCF format. We're going to go in, we're going to export as it's untitled but we don't want it to be untitled so we go DSP time traveler 24 dash 1 for the cover and that's the name of the file and it's exporting as a PNG but I don't want it to export it PNG. I want to export as a diff. So now we export. Exporting images TIFF. Compression. None. I don't like compressing. I like them nice and big. And since I got a new computer, I can have bigger files. Export. Boom, there it is. Now I can get rid of the OCF file because I don't really need it as far as things go here. So let's real quick, we're gonna we're not saving the that particular thing. When you open up a program a file that you've already done, um, drag, drop, it's there. Pretty simple. Down here is where you resize it so you're looking at closer or near or far, however you want to do it. Um, all these other tools are things to play with. 
that you can learn more on as we go. Uh, I'll be showing as much as I use um, when I get to making different effects on pages. I will make a video about it. So um, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to finish fixing this artwork and I'm going to go through. I'm going to scan each and every page of this issue and then when I'm done with all of that, I'll make my next video about doing the colors. So thank you all for watching. Subscribe. Um, like it. Share it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much.